Hey folks, today I'm gonna to teach you how to use my top five favorite new features in iOS 15. That's coming up next on Tech Talk America. Hey folks, and welcome to the class. When iOS 15 was initially released, features like live text and focus mode stole most of the press. That's why today I'd like to use my platform to teach you how to use some of the other handy tools in iOS 15. Let's start with one that is perfect for noisy environments. You probably noticed that the audio quality on FaceTime calls far exceeds that of a traditional phone call, but now it's even better. Let's say you've got a lot of background noise, whether it's a leaf blower, kids, pets, or a husband. Don't. Now you can use voice isolation to filter out those other noises. One of the things that you should know about this feature is that once you turn it on, it will automatically turn on the next time you place or receive a FaceTime audio or video call. To access voice isolation controls, you need to already be on a FaceTime call. Then just simply swipe down from the top right corner to access control center. Then tap on mic mode, and from here you'll see two options, voice isolation and wide spectrum. Wide spectrum is perfect when you want the other person to be able to hear your surroundings. So for example, if you're at the beach and you want the other person to be able to hear the waves. At number four, we have some major updates in the health app, including the ability to share health alerts with loved ones or even your doctor. To access this feature, just go into the health app and tap on sharing at the bottom. You can then select a contact and choose exactly what type of health information to share. You can go with Apple's suggestions, but for this demo, let's go with manual. Right off the bat, we have some of the most important alerts that you may seriously want to consider turning on, especially if you have cardiovascular issues or a fall risk. If we continue to the next page, you'll see we have several different categories. For example, let's go into heart. Here you'll see that I can share ECGs, my heart rate, heart rate variability, and much, much more. If you have loved ones who are a fall risk, then be sure to check out some of the metrics in mobility, including walking asymmetry and walking steadiness. If you scroll down further, you'll see the option to share blood oxygen levels. Again, lots of really helpful information. If you've watched my YouTube channel over the years, you know I'm a big fan of time-saving tricks. And number three is ridiculously handy. Let's say you have something on your iOS device that you want to share with someone else. It could be a website, a recipe, a song that you're listening to, a photo, or something else. In the past, you had to hunt down the share button, which let's face it, is never consistently in the same place. Then you had to tell it which application to use. So are you sending it as a text message or are you attaching it to an email? Then you'd have to select the contact. Check this out. Now you can simplify that entire workflow with a Siri command. All you need to say is, Siri, share this with the name of your contact. Now, if you're listening to a song or on a website, Siri will know to send it as a link. If you're on a picture, it will know to send it as an attachment. And if Siri doesn't see any other options, she can always send it as a screenshot. One little detail worth mentioning is that if Siri does send it as a screenshot, that image will not be saved to the photo library. Good to know. Let me preface number two by saying this. If you have parents who call you every time they need tech support, you're gonna hate this next feature. But on the bright side, if you are a parent who calls your kids every time you need tech support, then you're gonna love this feature. That's because it is now possible to screen share iOS devices through FaceTime. All you have to do is once you're on a FaceTime call, just look and tap on this icon and then tap again to confirm. My number one favorite feature in iOS 15 is something that every person should set up, a legacy contact. Everyone knows it's a good idea to have a will. That way, when you eventually exit stage left, there's a plan for what to do with your stuff. Well, now you can grant one or more of your contacts access to certain aspects of your data upon your death. This includes photos, contacts, bookmarks, and messages. Now note, it does not include keychain data or any licensed media. That means if grandpa had a massive iTunes collection, you're gonna have to pull off the digital equivalent of Weekend at Bernie's. You hear something? Uh-uh. There it is again. Yeah. I wonder what that is. What is that? To assign someone as a legacy contact, just go into settings on your iPhone and tap on your name at the top. Then tap on password and security, 
And if you scroll down just a little bit on this next screen, you will find the option to set a legacy contact. On this next screen, you will find that you have two options. You can either grant access through an iMessage or you can print out a code. Personally, I recommend going with the option to send this to the other person's phone only because I worry that a code is a little bit too easy to accidentally lose. One important note when setting a legacy contact, you can only do this if both you and the other person are on iPhones and both devices are running at least iOS 15.2. Now, let's say that someone names you as their legacy contact and then they pass. The easiest way to access the data is by visiting digital-legacy.apple.com. And please be aware that in addition to being listed as a legacy contact, you also do need to be able to provide a death certificate. So which of these new features was your favorite? Let me know about it down below. Thank you for watching everyone. This is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America. Class dismissed.